beginning church and our online family and friends thank you once again for joining in with us on tonight we pray that you will click that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends our scripture tonight comes from psalm 
that their hearing, Father God, will turn into doing. And that doing, Father God, will be a blessing to the body of Christ. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Thank you again for joining us here at the New Beginning Church from our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service tonight. We have come to lift up none other than Jesus the Christ. One more again, we've come to lift up the name of Jesus. And we appreciate your being with us here tonight. If you would, uh, turn with me to uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, again tonight. Colossians chapter 2, verses number 18 and 19. Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Colossians. In the New Testament, the book is Colossians, the chapter is 2. And the verses are 18 and 19, 18 and 19. We're looking further here in the book of Colossians chapter 2. Paul is warning again on tonight. He's warning us again to be aware, to beware, and to be believers in Jesus Christ. First of all, he wants us to be believers in Jesus Christ, God the Father, believe in him. God the Son, believe in him. God the Holy Spirit, believe in him. And secondly, he wants us to beware. Beware that there are some false prophets even in the world today. There are some false prophets that walk with us. There are some false prophets that are, that are part of our lives. He says, whatever you do, beware. Verse number 18 and 19 reads like this. <clears throat> Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worshiping, false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knitted together by joints and ligaments grows with increase that is from God. Paul says, beware of false teachers, beware of false preachers, beware of mysticism, Beware of legalism. Beware of legalism. Legalism are those things that you follow, rules, traditions that's been passed down many times from one generation to the other, but has nothing to do with godliness. He's talking to those who have been born again, those new saints of God. He's talking to us. And he's saying to us that false prophets didn't disappear because you got saved. False prophets are still real. False teachers are still all over the world in which we live. We need to understand that legalism is a system that can take over if you don't beware of it. We need to make sure that we understand that mysticism can take over if we do not beware of it. First of all, let's talk about legalism. Legalism. Jesus addresses this process of legalism when he talks to his disciples and talks to the Pharisees and the Sadducees about the Sabbath. Jesus says to them, that the Sabbath was made for the man and the man not for the Sabbath. They were conforming to a set of rules, a set of rituals, a set of rites that they have been going through throughout the entire Old Testament, throughout Judaism. They were continuing to conform to them. Jesus says to them, I want you to understand your legalistic ways and your traditions do not compare to Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Jesus 
is after a relationship with us. He's not after a tradition that we abide into. Jesus want us to have a wholesome relationship and a great fellowship with him. For those who are not born again, Paul is saying to us, don't get caught up in legalism, caught up in the structure of old, where it disconnects you from the Lord himself. Paul says here, legalism is holding you captive the things that you do, used to do. He talks earlier in Colossians, he talks about circumcision and how they thought circumcision made them holier. He talks about legalism from the standpoint that you can't continue in legalism because Jesus' relationship is more important than those rituals. So Jesus is not looking for a ritual from us He's looking for a relationship with us. He's looking for a relationship with us. He is looking for a situation where he can come in and dwell with us and we can dwell with him. He wants to be close to us. He wants us to be close to him. He wants us to be increased and build up in him. And we will see this as we, as we move through these two verses. He says, let no one cheat you. The word cheat means let no one come against you. Let no one defraud you. Let no one beguile you. Let no one arbitrate you. Let no one look down at you. Let no one disqualify you. Let no one count you unworthy. And finally, it means just that's one word, cheat. Finally means let no one rob you. Let me go over that again. <laughs> Paul says, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, let no one cheat you. Let no one come against you. This word cheat means let no one defraud you. Let no one beguile you. Let no one arbitrate you. Let no one down you. Let no one put you down. No one count you worthy. Let uh, count you unworthy, I mean. Let no one count you unworthy and let no one disqualify you. And finally, let no one rob you of your rewards. You see, God has rewards for us. Paul says to the church at Corinth, as he says to the church at Ephesus, and now he says it to the church at Colossae, let no one look down on you and finally no one rob you. Because people are out to rob you. And this form of robbing comes from a form of robbing you from your rewards. He says, let no one rob you of your rewards. You see, once you're born again, once you are saved, you are going to heaven. When you die, you are on your way to heaven. If you are born again, if you have confessed Christ as your personal Lord and your personal Savior, you're on your way to heaven. You can die today or you can die 20 years from now. You are saved. You are born again. You are on your way to heaven. Everybody who's born again, everybody saved is going to heaven when they die. Everyone who has confessed Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is on their way to heaven. But there's a greater picture that I need you to see tonight. Because you are saved, not only are you going to heaven, but you have some rewards. And look at what it says. He says, let no one look down on you. Let no one cheat you. Let no one come against you. Let no one defraud you. Let no one beguile you. Let no one arbitrate you. Let no one look down at you. No one count you unworthy. No one uh, disqualify you. And no one rob you 
of your reward. You see, we have, we have rewards. We have great rewards. Since we're saved, we're born again, we don't have to work for our salvation. Jesus, Jesus Christ has already done the work for us. He voluntarily died for us on Calvary. He gave his life for us over, over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus paid the price for us. We are on our way to heaven. Only thing we have to do is receive the free gift that he's given us. But there are some rewards that you can get just by being obedient unto God. Don't let anyone cut off your rewards. Don't let anyone cheat you of your reward. Because look at what he says, taking delight in false humility. This word false humility is the same as voluntary humility. Let no one think that they're going to cut your rewards off through false humility. In other words, People try to act like they're humble when they're not. And when you say, man, you, you really did a good job on that sermon. You did a good job on that singing. Sister, you really did a good job on serving that person. And they come back and instead of saying thank you, instead of saying praise the Lord, they'll say, well, we try. That's fake <laughs> humility. It, it, and, it, and it deals with the motive. The motive is to get further pats on the back. That is fake humility. That's false humility. That is not humility at all. You see, we gain our rewards by our motives, our love and our devotion to the Lord. Never let other folk think that they have the right to take away your rewards. The word rewards mean award. The word reward means a prize. And finally, the word reward means God's approval. Too often, too often, we want man's approval. Too often, we want men to say we did a good job. But the fact of the matter is, we need God to say we've done a great job. I say to students in seminary all the time, if you want to hear God say, well done, you're going to have to do well. <laughs> See, there are people, there are people who wants to hear God say, well done, but they're not doing well. They have excuses. Any little thing that changes upsets their day. Any little thing the pastor asks them to do just throws them off their game. They're not doing well because they can't handle change. And let me tell you, my dears, change will always take place. Change will happen whether you change. 20 years ago, we didn't have internet as we have it today. 20 years ago, men who are preaching behind and in front of cameras today didn't even think about doing that many years ago. 20 years ago, we didn't have live streaming the way we have live streaming today. Things change. And we have to make the adjustments we have to change with it. When you are born again, you ought to fall in love with Jesus. When you are born again, you have to be devoted to Christ Jesus. When you are saved, you appreciate the debt that Jesus has paid for you on Calvary. And you show that you appreciate it by how you live your life. If you live your life in love, if you live your life in dedication, if you live your life 
uh, in a period where, where you look forward to talking and spending time with God, then you show your appreciation to him. But he says, don't let men look down on you in a, in a sense of false humility. Paul talks about this false humility in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 5. Paul deals with this false humility, this voluntary humility that men do, this falseness of godliness. He talks about it in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 5, where he says that men have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They want to be on the scene acting like they with God. They want to be on the scene acting like God is with them. But let me tell you, if somebody has to tell you that God is with them, chances are God is not with them. It's a sense of false humility. It's a sense of faking it till they make it. Paul says, he says, Colossians chapter 2, verse number 18, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility. He says, don't let them take delight in false humility, and don't you take delight in false humility. Don't you get caught up thinking that you're more than who you are. Don't you get caught up where you think that people have to serve you. Don't you get caught up in it where you understand that God is God, but you don't want to really accept him as God over you. Don't get too big for your britches. <laughs> don't get caught up in false humility because we serve and we obey God out of our love for him. We serve and we obey God out of our love for for God. And we serve and obey God because God first loved us. We serve and obey God out of our love and our devotion for God. And we also serve and obey God out of what God has shown us, out of his love for us. Although we would go to heaven, Although we will have glorified bodies, there are still degrees of rewards. There are some rewards that have degrees. There are just as it is a degree to punishment, there is also degrees to your rewards. Now, if you want the, the upper echelon rewards, <laughs> You do upper echelon stuff. Walk in faith. Sacrifice for God. You see, there are people that think they're doing something. They, they really think they have devoted themselves to the Lord. I said, I look at them sometimes and say, bless his heart. Bless her heart. Lord, have mercy. They really think they're making great sacrifices for the Lord. I oftentimes tell the people at the New Beginning Church that God has given us 168 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. And we can't give him two hours in worship. Mm -hmm. God has given us 168 hours a week. And we can't give him one hour of service to our mankind. God has given us 168 hours a week, and we cannot give him five hours a week in studying his word. God has given us uh, 168 hours a week, and we can't spend time in meditating and practicing his word for two hours. Once a day. We can't give him 30 minutes in the morning before we rush out the door. We can't give him 30 minutes at night before we go to sleep. In our prayer time, it's just horrifying. 
Well, preacher, how you know when I pray? I can pray walking. I can pray talking. You're right. But I'm talking about dedicated time in your secret closet by yourself talking to the Lord. And when you're talking to him, you're not asking for something. You see, we, we love the Lord. We, we don't we don't operate out of false humility. We don't operate out of a sense of godliness and the desire and, and don't uh, have the power thereof with us. We know that God is the most powerful being have ever been present in our lives. So we walk with him and we love him. And, and we understand we don't work for him in order to gain fame. We don't walk with him in order to have what we get. We do it out of the pure love of God. Paul says, don't get caught up. Don't be fooled. And don't you get caught up in false humility. And he says, don't get caught up in the worship of angels. Don't get caught up in the worship of angels. This word worship it's the it's a ceremonial uh, it's a ceremonial observation. It is a religious and a pious demonstration. Worship. Now this is not the same way we worship God because when we worship God, we aim our attention and our praise to Him. When we worship God, we aim. God is the object of our worship. When we worship God, God is the one we see. It's a shame that people go to church watching who showed up with who when you ought to have your eyes on the star post in glory. You ought to have your eyes on God. Our worship ought not be a ceremony. Our worship ought to give of ourselves when it comes to God. We ought to lose ourselves when it comes to God. Come to God. Songwriter says, I give myself away. First of all, you can't give yourself away to God because if you're God's child, God already owns you. And it's good that you want to give your all to him. You ought to lay your all on the altar to him and give yourself to him. You need to make sure that your focus your attention and your praise is on the one and only God that we serve. You can't be looking out the window. You don't have time to chew gum. You don't have time to play with somebody's baby. Even if you're at home tonight, you don't have time to play with the baby when we're in worship. You don't have time to talk across the fence. You don't have time to walk with your iPhone, your tablet, and your phone, walking around and, and looking at other things and engaging in other things. We are in worship. And when we are in worship, we are to honor God and God alone. So Paul says, don't get caught up in worshiping angels. Don't get caught up in worshiping the messengers. Don't get caught up in worshiping the, the fallen spirits. This is a good time to talk about this fallen spirit thing. We're, we're coming up on, on Halloween where a good day have gone bad. Don't get caught up on worshiping and dressing up for Halloween when your, 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 your admiration ought to be on God. I know, I know they, they decorated. I mean, they started Halloween right after the 4th of July. <laughs> you go in the store, the whole thing is wiped out. A whole area is wiped out, and they start putting Halloween stuff in after the 4th of July. And after Halloween is over, November 1st, they're going to start hitting you with Christmas in November, November 1st. And God forbid... Folk that will fight over a TV <laughs> the day at, on Good Friday. The fight over a TV on Black Friday. It's Black Friday, all right. It's Black Friday for, because people get hurt, people get involved in, in fights, and people lose all their money. Talking about they getting a deal. Let me tell you, if you got a TV last Black Friday, don't go out there and get one today, this time. How many TVs you need? 
Oh, they going for $50. Wide, flat screen, beautiful touch screen, and it's a smart TV. Let me tell you, the same TV will be available after backfire is gone. Don't worship the days and don't, Paul says, don't worship angels. This, this, word, this word angel is the messenger. It is even the word pastor. Uh-uh. Don't even worship the pastor. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I am so glad that the New Beginning Church understands real well that there should not be a worship of the pastor. I didn't say that you ought not give to the pastor. I didn't say that you ought not honor the pastor. I didn't say you ought not spend time doing things for the pastor, but you ought not worship any man. That worship ought to be to God. So this, Paul says, don't worship, worship angels, the messenger. They're just messengers. They're just conduits. They're this, they, they are, are not even the switch that turns the light on. They're just the conduit, the plastic or the, the metal that the, the wire runs. They are not even the wire. It's just the conduit to get the wire to the, to the bulb where the bulb can come on. That's why we can't worship Mary. And she's no longer Virgin Mary. Those days was over 2,000 years ago. We can't worship Mary because Mary is just an instrument. Mary was just conduit. Mary was just the element that God used to get Jesus here. We worship Jesus. We worship God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and, and him alone. The triune God. We worship him alone. Paul says, and the reason why he had to make these statements is because that what was going on then is still going on now. People are looking for somebody to worship. People are losing their mind over a man in the White House that cares nothing about him. People are standing in freezing cold. He gets on Air Force One. He flies off. They standing out in freezing cold. Many of them senior citizens, and they have to go to the hospital, and he gone on back to the White House. Do not worship the man. Do not worship the angel. Put your worship in, in God, Jesus Christ himself. We ought to worship him. We ought to worship him. Don't take the light. Don't take the light and false humility. Don't take delight in worshiping angels, mm -hmm. intruding into those things which he has not seen. Intruding, intruding, walking in, setting a pace, embarking upon. Don't, don't get caught up in intruding into those things which he has not seen. That's what, this is where mysticism comes in. Those things that have not been seen. I need to park right here for a minute so you can understand. I'm not talking about not trusting God for things that are not seen. You ought to trust God for things that are not seen. Mm -hmm. You ought to trust God to bring those things in existence that are not present. But I think many preachers have gotten off wrong when they quote the scripture, I call those things into existence that are not seen. God and God alone calls into existence those things that are not seen. Uh-oh, I just bust somebody, sanctified bubble. Call those things that are not as though they are. God calls those things into existence that are not in existence. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh. Everything on planet earth, God has already put it here. Man think he's making inventions. He think he's making discoveries. Only thing we're doing is changing it from one form to the other. Scientists will even tell you that energy cannot be 
created nor destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to the other. Hand sanitizer, weak alcohol, just been put in a jail form. It's been changed from one form to the other. Sap that, that comes out of a tree, it just comes out of the tree. It comes from the tree that God has created, that God put on earth, and that sap runs out. It's just the inside of what's in the tree showing up on the outside. God has already put it here. And here we go, we deal with mysticism, meaning that we are calling upon those things that are not seen. He says, don't get caught up in those things. Don't delight in them, intruding into those things which he has not seen. Mysticism. And see, you can tell when a person, a person is caught up in mysticism because they think that they are better than you are. They have idle visions. And they will tell you that they are much, they, they are bold enough to tell you that they are better than you are in the spirit. This is a problem because I just want to let you know, it takes a spiritual man to lead a spiritual woman. Many women today are frustrated beyond ends because they grabbed an unspiritual man because he was tall, dark, and handsome. Because they grabbed an unspiritual man and they are spiritual women. And they are trying to be led, trying to submit themselves to an unspiritual man. And it's, it's just frustrating. Just unequally yoked. Now, those of you who are already married, get in there and work it out. <laughs> you with the joker now. You with him now, just, just work it out. But we have to make sure we tell young girls, young boys... Be careful that you don't get caught up in those things that are unequally yoked, relationships that are unequally yoked. Get caught up in mysticism. Mysticism is when somebody really, really, really think they know something that, ooh, that's going on that's in, in, in the high echelon that you don't know anything about, the unseen. Those things that, that I know this and you don't know that. It is, a, it is a similar process that goes on in corporate America all over the world. Where you come in, and since you've been in the job a long time, they put a young person with you, and you withhold information because you feel like, I can't share all this with him because he'll take my job. Let me share with you. God and God alone keeps your job. You ought to be sharing everything that you can possibly share with a young person so you can move on off the scene and get out of the way. Because you need to understand that God is the one who's our supplier. God is the one who is our source. These things are just our resource. Mm -hmm. Mysticism, caught up. People are caught up in mysticism. They can read one verse of scripture. They can learn one verse of scripture and think they really got it going on. Paul says, don't get caught up in this stuff. He says, don't get caught up in it. And then he says, vainly puffed up. Don't get caught up with these people who are vainly puffed up. In other words, they are haughty. <laughs> they are inflated. And they are proud. Don't get caught up. Don't, don't let people look down on you because they are puffed up. They are vainly puffed up. They are haughty. They are inflated and they are proud. Paul warns the church, just stick with Jesus. Don't go out and find you a new thought religion. Don't go out and get caught up in all this new age stuff. Always be humble and watch God open doors. I used to watch preachers go down to the prison and when they went down to the prison, they thought that the prison guards owed them something. They, they thought that the prison warden owed them something. And I've seen same similar preachers go to the hospital and they walk in and they say, well, I'm the preacher, I'm the pastor. But don't you know the preacher, the pastor still has to follow rules and regulations? They may let you in the door to do some things that they won't let anybody else do. They may let you in the door to go, go in some areas that everybody else has to be kept out of. But don't go in there bold. <laughs> don't go in there prideful. 
You humble yourself. And I've seen when I went in humbly, I got further down the road than any other preacher could because I humbled myself under the authority that was in that, that institution. When you humble yourself. People who get raises, people who get promotions, they 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 armor themselves under the leadership. I know there's some things there are some things going on that people get promotion based on what they do for the boss. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about walking with the Lord in such a way that God opens door that even your boss cannot close. I've seen it happen. I've seen God open doors that bosses can't close. I've seen, I've seen raises take place and the boss wondering why I gave him the raise. Because God opened the door and God gave it to him. So don't, don't, don't get caught up in being puffed up, haughty and inflated and prideful. And then he says, by his fleshly mind. Don't get caught up in the flesh. Flesh. Carnality. Non-spiritual. Remember, he's talking to believers. Those who love the Lord, don't get caught up in your flesh with your fleshly mind. In other words, focus on those things that are above and not those things that are, are beneath. Sister Obama says it well, when they go low, we go high. Don't get caught up in the stuff in the gutter. Don't you get drugged down. Dr. King says it well when he says to us, you cannot keep a good man down unless you stay in the dirt with him. We have to understand and understand well that God wants to elevate us if we keep our minds out of the gutter. If we keep our minds out of the flesh, we got to focus on things that are above, things that, that are glorious, things that are going well. If you focus on those things that are positive, then those things that are positive will follow you. The other bad thing about mysticism is sometimes we get caught up in positive thinking and we think positive thinking will take us further than God can. There's nothing wrong with thinking positively because thinking positively will make your day well. But the fact of the matter is, in your thinking positive, don't believe in that and that alone because it becomes mysticism. God himself opened doors. God himself. Lady told me the other day that, that I am in meditation. I said, oh, yeah, you're in the word. Thank God you're in the word. No, I'm, I'm in meditation with crystals. Mysticism. Don't come up with a new thing. Meditate on God's word. Look at verse number 19. Verse 19 says, and not holding fast to the head. In other words, there are false prophets out there that's, that's showing you that there's another way and people were not holding fast to the head. This word head means Christ. You see it's capitalized? This word head means Christ. And we have to understand that Christ supplies our life's growth. He supplies the life growth to every person. He supplies growth in all our lives. Jesus Christ, John picks this thought up in John chapter 15, verse number five. John picks this thought up and he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. As long as you connect to me, you good. You, you just stay connected. The problem is, I believe today the church, especially in America, has lost her connection with Christ. We're running to do everything, running and trying everything, but we've lost our connection with Christ. We're still saved. We're still on our way to heaven. We're missing some reward it's because we've lost our connection with the head. The head is Jesus Christ. I oftentimes tell churches, uh, Jesus Christ is the head of the church. The pastor is not the head of the church. I wouldn't be a good head. The pastor is never the head of the church. The pastor is just having to be the best man that has been chosen to take care of the bride until the bridegroom comes. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And because Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, then we are assigned, those of us who are still here, we are assigned to look out for the body of Christ until the groom shows up. 
So I, the closest I can get is to be the best man. <laughs> because the bridegroom is coming. And when the bridegroom comes, he going to take his bride on out of here. When the bridegroom shows up, the bridegroom will take care of the, to take care of the bride. And when the bridegroom come, the, that same verse describes it as someone who nourishes it. Someone who, who knits it together by the joints in the ligaments. He is the one that gives us growth with increase. And if we're going to have growth with increase, that growth, that increase must come from God. Look at what he says in verse 19, Colossians chapter 2. This growth and this increase comes only from God. And it, we are tied together with Jesus Christ in the ligaments and in the joints. And if we are repetitious with Jesus Christ, meaning that we are before him morning, we are before him in the evening, we are before him in the daytime, then we grow strong. Yes. We are strengthened. This word nourish means that, that Jesus, Jesus nourishes us. He, he ministers to us. He is the full supply. He, he causes us to have the right contributions. And because we're strengthened in him, we are strengthened through him. We are strengthened by him. We are strengthened with him. He's the one that makes us grow. We can read. We can read all day long. If we don't meditate on the word, we can't grow. But when we walk with Christ, when we allow him to nourish us, he, we allow him to knit us together. This, this phrase, knit together, means to unify us spiritually. To unite us spiritually. The church today needs to go through a reuniting with Christ. And a reuniting with each other. And because he's in every ligament and every, every joint. Every bone and every muscle. Every nerve of the church, Jesus Christ is in it. And when he's in it, he strengthens us. He strengthens us spiritually. Look what it says. It, it grows in the increase that is from God. I just want to demonstrate it to you right now. One thing I, I understand that um, this, is not, this is not a lot of weight. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's not a lot of weight. That's not, not a lot of weight. But one thing I do, if I do it with enough repetitions, if I do it over and over again, it will strengthen me. If I, if I allow the weight to deal with my tendons, my ligaments, my bones, and my joints, I become strong. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't have to be a lot of weight. But if I do it over and over again, a change will happen. An increase will take place if I just keep doing it over and over again. I just got to do it over and over again. Sometimes I have to push myself just to do it over and over again. And you got to do it over and over again. And that's how it is with God's word. We have to be in his word over and over again. And we have to live his word. We cannot get caught up in all these traditions and neglect God's word. The text says we need to be closely knitted together with the head. The word of God, Jesus the Christ. We have to live what we read. Yes. We have to practice what we read. We have to exercise what we read. And even if it's not a lot of scripture, just go over and over again. Mm -hmm. Just be repetitious with it. Just keep working with it. And you will see, the text says you will see an increase. The, the head will nourish you. The head will make you strong. The head will make you grow. you got to be closely knitted together. Look at what it says. Verse number 18 and verse number 19. Colossians chapter 2, and I'll leave you alone. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Taking delight in false humility. And worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, mysticism, 
vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, carnality, do anything, say anything, act any kind of way, and not holding fast to the head. People have gone on to believe everything but what Jesus has come for us to believe in. We don't, we don't, we don't exercise our minds and our hearts. You see, it's not enough to be buffed up. It's not enough to exercise your physique and your physical state. It's not enough. Yeah, you will get physically strong, but the devil doesn't care how physically strong you are. You have to exercise your spiritual man. You have to, you have to continue to repeat the exercises over and over and over again with your spiritual man. And as you exercise your spiritual man, you will see the increase. Look at what it says. It says, verse 19, and not holding fast to the head. They were not holding fast to Christ. From whom the body, who is whom? Christ. From whom, the, the, whom all the body is nourished and knitted together and knit together by the joints and the ligaments. The joints and the ligaments have to work together. Let me tell you, the problem with the local church today is that we are not working together. The church, the local church, is the only militia, is the only military, is the only force that shoots its own wounded. Christ is trying to, trying to bind us together, trying to knit us together. Grows with the increase that is from God. I, I expect some increase. I expect some increase physically as I work out. I, I expect increase. But as we work out in the word, as we follow and obey Jesus Christ, we ought to expect increase. We ought to expect Jesus Christ to increase us because he's the one that supplies us with what we need spiritually. So get excited about your physique. Get excited about exercising in, in your physique. Get excited about exercising your mind. Get excited about exercising your heart. But most of all, get excited about your spiritual exercise. Get excited about it. And don't let anybody look down on you because you don't practice legalism and mysticism. Paul says, whatever you do, don't get caught up in the worship of angels. Worship God himself. <laughs> this legalistic t t teaching will always tell you to try something new. Big Mama would say it like this. <laughs> the same bridge that brought me over is the same bridge that I'm going back on. We have to get to the point in our lives where we understand that we don't need a new religion. Jesus is not concerned about your religion. He's concerned about your relationship. We have to be concerned about relationships. And the ultimate relationship is with Jesus the Christ. And that's why every Wednesday, every Sunday, and every time during the day, when I contact and come in contact with somebody, I want to be able to introduce them to Jesus Christ and create a relationship with them. There may be somebody listening to me tonight who do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I submit to you today, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. He wants a relationship with you. You can get to know him just as you are. You can get to know him regardless of what has happened. You can get to know him tonight. You can get to go to heaven when you die. Just believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. They hung him. They killed him. Jesus died for you and for me. They took Jesus, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, Jesus rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth. 
in his hand. If you can believe that story, if you can trust that story to get you to heaven, you can be saved right here today. You can be born again right today. If you would, bow your head with me and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life so you can qualify for heaven. None of us are qualified, but Jesus makes us. He, he imputes in us righteousness. He qualifies us, but you must receive him as your personal savior. Will you believe? Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. We believe if you prayed this prayer, trusting in this story, that, that you're born again. And if you're listening to me and you receive Jesus tonight, inbox me and let me know that you are now in the family of faith. And if you're here and you need prayer, please inbox me and let us pray with you and pray for you. If you're listening to me and you're in between church homes, or you need a church home, or you don't have a church home. Inbox me and let me know so we can welcome you to the New Beginning Church. I recommend the New Beginning Church as your church home. At the New Beginning Church, Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. And we worship him and him alone. We want to pray with you, pray for you, and be a blessing to you. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord. And we want to, to ask you to give, and you can give by three different ways. You can give by three different ways. You can get to know Jesus through your giving. You can give, first of all, by cash app. You can give by cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by way of P.O. Box, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'd like to hear from you and your gifts. To the New Beginning Church members, you can send in your tithes and your offering to any of these three. To our visitors, you can send your contribution to any of these three locations. And we will be glad to, to record it for you, accept it, and, and the Lord will bless you for it. I want to thank you for joining us here tonight as we are here every Wednesday night. Thank you for joining us here at the 7.20 p.m. service uh, on every Wednesday night. And also you can join us on Sunday morning. Uh, you can join us on Sunday morning for 9 a.m. Sunday School, and you can join us on Sunday morning for our 1045 service. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on tonight. We are praying continually for, for our members and for our visitors. Thank you for being, being a part in trusting God during these tough times. We live in some tough, some very tough times. We live in and some tough times, and prayer will fix it. I want to let you know that you need to be praying. We had a good time in our prayer meeting on second Tuesday and also on fourth Tuesday. We need to continue to pray 
we need to continue to pray. We need to continue to pray. We're praying for Sister Zenobia Jones. We're praying for Sister Zenobia Jones. We're praying for Sister Kendall Wynn. We're praying for Sister Ann Kendall. We're praying for the Taylor family. We're praying for the New Beginning Church, the Holman Street Church, and we're praying for the New Mount Calvary Church. Of course, we're praying for the school system. We're praying that the Lord finds a way to bless our children in the midst of school. We're praying for Joe Banks. We're praying for the Todd family. We're praying for the city of Lake Jackson. We're praying for the Malo and Trejo families. And we're also praying for every pastor that pastors will make proper decisions during this COVID-19 period. Uh, believe it or not, it's tough to make decisions for people's lives, except we pray and, and God unctions us. We want to make sure that we continue to pray for people. And we wanna pray for the right decisions, when to go back in, when to continue live. And of course, the New Beginning Church, we've been live for the last five years or more. And so um, this is nothing new to us, but what is new is that we're not meeting in person together. And I know you miss it, and I, I do too, but we want everybody to be safe. So we're praying for this COVID-19 virus to get out of here and, and leave us alone. We're praying. We're praying that, uh, that God delivers us from this, this awful virus. We're also praying and we're voting. We want every person who's registered to vote, everybody that is of the age to vote, to get out and vote. We are voting because this election is a battle for the soul of the nation. This election is a battle for us, the soul of our country. Dr. King said this in, in 1963, 65, we're battling for the soul of the country. And now here, years later, Vice President Biden is reminding us that we are in a battle for the soul of this nation. So we want to pray and we need to vote. I say to you, uh, vote like it's all dependent on you and pray like it's all dependent on God. Those two things go hand in hand. People have lost their lives for your right to pray and your right to vote. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again for our Bible study. We're looking forward to seeing you at 720 every Wednesday. We're looking forward to seeing you at 9 a.m., 9 a.m., Facebook Live, as well as on Zoom, 9 a.m. on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Our Sunday school teachers are waiting to greet you at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school class. Also, for our youth and our young people, please contact me and let me know that you need to be a part of our youth and our young people's Sunday school classes. They're they are challenging each other through Kahoot. They're doing their Sunday school classes in a very methodic way and challenging each other through Kahoot. If you have a child, if you have a young adult, please contact me and let me know so we can get you passed in to Sunday school classes. Young people need to know the Bible and we have the avenue of Sunday school class to learn the Bible, amen? Sunday school Bible study, as well as Sunday morning worship service at 10.45 a.m. on our broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you and hearing from you on Sunday morning, as well as Wednesday night. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12 and verse 32. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you do and all that you have done. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we go. Bless those who we are lifting up before you in prayer. And bless every person, Father God, who will hear and will hear this broadcast. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you remove COVID-19, coronavirus, from this world. Lord, we know you can do it. And we're trusting you to make it happen. Bless those who are in charge, those who are officials. 
blessed scientists and medical technicians, that, Father God, you would give them the wisdom. You would give them the knowledge and the understanding. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Bless you and God keep you.